So basically, ammeter is a device that is going to measure the current flowing in a circuit. Okay. So after certain modification, we can modify or we can create an ammeter from a galvanometer. Starting from the galvanometer, we'll do some readjustment and we are going to see that right now that how do you convert a galvanometer to an ammeter. And this ammeter will be a device that is going to give me a larger value of current. So I have got more range that I can measure by using an ammeter rather than the limitation that I had with the galvanometer. So the device used to measure the current in an electrical circuit is ammeter. How do you connect this ammeter? Well, you'll always connect this ammeter in series. Why? Because you know that in series, the current is what you want to measure and you want all the current to flow through this ammeter so that it can detect the entire amount of current which is flowing in the circuit. Perfect. Okay. So ammeter is always connected in series with the appliance so that you can measure the value of the current that is actually flowing through that appliance. No problem. But we had to start off with what? We had to start off with a galvanometer. So this was the basic device that we have. Correct. So the galvanometer is, let us say, an instrument which has got a limitation in context to measuring the value of current. But if the current which is flowing in the circuit is more than the maximum deflection current of the galvanometer, we cannot use a galvanometer in the circuit, right? We want an ammeter. So how do we get from a galvanometer to an ammeter? What is the method I'll tell you? The method is to connect this with a resistance in parallel okay in parallel we connect this with a resistance in parallel we are going to connect it with a resistance and this resistance is going to be a very very small resistance first understand that what we are doing okay so to this galvanometer we connect a resistance in parallel and this very small resistance has a special name it is called a shunt Okay, it is called as what? Shunt. And let us say this resistance is S. It has got a special name called as shunt. Okay, so shunt is a very small resistance connected in parallel to the galvanometer. Now you see what will happen. So now you see what will happen. What happens is, let us say I amount of current is coming from here and it will get distributed in this as well as in this. Correct. Let us say the maximum amount of current that you can measure over here is Ig. So let us say Ig, which is the maximum value of current that can flow through that resistance is flowing. What will be flowing across this? I minus Ig. I minus Ig. No problem. Okay. Now this shunt resistance, if you have taken this value to be very, very small, obviously shunt is a resistance which is having very small value. What will happen? When the current comes to this point, it has got two paths. It has got two paths. One is it has to flow through this galvanometer. Another one is that it can go across this shunt resistance. Which path is actually preferred by current? Current always prefers a less resistance path. That's our nature as well, right? We like to have less amount of tension in our life. We all want to get relaxed, right? So, what will happen is that if you think that this resistance is a very small resistance as compared to the resistance of the galvanometer, most of the current will flow through this. Most of the current is going to flow through this shunt resistance. No problem. Okay. Just let us take an example. Let us say that this one is the maximum current that can flow through this is let us say 10 milliampers. And the current which was coming in, the current which was coming in is let us say 100 milliampers. Okay. So 100 milliampers came. Since this shunt resistance is a very small resistance, what happened? 90 milliampers was flowing through the shunt resistance and 10 milliampers had flown through this. No problem. Now we have a rating, right? We have a, we have a pointer like this where obviously we have a pointer like this where we can put this one as 0, this is 1, this is 2 and so on, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 10. So, 
we have a pointer like this okay so we can have one this is two this is three this is four and so on you can have it like this correct or you can make it in form of milliampere this one has 10 milliampere this is 20 milliampere this is 30 milliampere 40 milliampere 50 milliampere and so on you can have all this like this no problem so what happens is when you are looking at 10 milliamperes the pointer will be pointing over here it is showing because this is where the instrument is and it is showing you 10 milliamperes wherein actually the total amount of current is how much the total amount of current is how much the total amount of current is 100 milliamperes so we need to actually redesign redesign this pointer what we will do we will say okay 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 had it been a pointer of the galvanometer had it been the pointer of a galvanometer we know that this pointer would have shown maximum deflection like this and this would have read how much 10 milliamperes correct if there was no current it would have shown you what zero it would have shown you what zero now when 10 milliamperes is flowing in the circuit it means that or when when 100 milliamperes is flowing in the circuit the galvanometer is telling me that it is 10 okay so in the same ratio can i say that when it is showing me 10 can i rewrite this as 100 10 means 100 milliamperes because obviously we know that it is in that ratio that 90 milliamperes flows from here and 10 is flowing from here when it is going to show me 5 milliamperes what does it mean it means that you just have to multiply it with a factor of 10 it means that the actual current is where 50 50 correct so if you would have originally written it you would have written it 5 milliampere okay the galvanometer is only there and it is showing me 5 milliamperes but since now you have connected it across the shunt resistance through which most of the current is flowing you know that when it is showing me 10 milliamperes 10 milliamperes now stands for 100 correct so 9 milliamperes will stand for 90 9 milliamperes will stand for 90 so let's now redraw the circuit 10 milliamperes stands for how much 100 10 milliamperes means 100 so at maximum deflection we'll write 10 milliamperes 9 milliamperes if it is showing it means 90 if 8 milliamperes it means 80 if it is 7 70 and so on did you understand so if at some point of time you you see this deflection and you are getting what value 7 milliamperes what does it mean it means that the net current in the circuit is going to be 70 because that's how the ratio is now drawing this is in our hand isn't it and now you are able to measure 10 times more value of current that you were able to by using only a galvanometer and this combination this combination is what we call as an ammeter this combination is connected in series all right so this combination is an ammeter this is the internal structure of the ammeter and this combination is connected in series and this is called as an ammeter did you get the idea right no problem did you understand that how now we are able to measure the deflection is same because you might say sir ig is the maximum deflection that you are talking about right so deflection is same how you are saying you are measuring more because now I know when 10 milliamperes is flowing through the galvanometer and the reading is showing me 10, it means actually it is 10 times more. If it is 8, it is 10 times of 8, that is 80. If it is 7, it is 10 times of 7 because the rest is going through that shunt resistance. I know the ratio. I am the one who is fixing the shunt, right? And most of the time they will ask you that what should be the value of the shunt to make an ammeter of this range. Okay, once we do the question, you will understand this. Now, it was only up to this part that if you have understood everything then there is no problem at all because questions are going to be direct questions are going to be straightforward and in the same pattern nevertheless let's do the calculation then let's find out okay all that is done and dusted no problem sir but how do i calculate the value of this s how do i calculate the value of this shunt resistance so fine we have the division we know that the current that is flowing through this is ig and this is i minus ig if you look at these two points these two points 
the potential difference across these two points should be same isn't it the potential difference across these two points should be same or you can also use what kirchhoff's rule go for this loop write the equation of kirchhoff's rule for the loop and then equate it to zero correct for a closed loop okay anyways so shunt resistance shunt resistance is a very small resistance very small resistance connected in parallel to the candelometer and this entire thing is called as an ammeter and this entire thing is fixed in a circuit in series so you always connect an ammeter in series no problems with this okay now let's come to the expression now if i think about it these two this s and this g both of them are parallel to one another g is just a representation of the resistance of the galvanometer no problem ig is the current which is flowing along this branch and i minus ig is flowing along this branch what will be the potential difference whatever is the potential difference is the same so we know that the potential difference across this s is the potential difference across g which means can i write potential difference across s is potential difference across g correct what is the potential difference across s it will be i minus ig times s is equal to ig times g if you want you can also use kirchhoff's law you can start from this point let us say a move like this and come back let us say this is point b this is point c and back to a okay use kirchhoff's law no problem equate it to zero you are going to get the same thing perfect what they are going to ask you most of the time the value of the shunt resistance how do we find the value of the shunt resistance well s will be equal to ig by i minus ig times g did you understand did you understand this simple formula all right how do we calculate the value of the shunt resistance this is how we calculate the value of the shunt resistance as simple as that so ig is the full scale deflection of the current g is the resistance of the galvanometer coil and s is the shunt resistance and this is the formula to calculate the value of the shunt resistance now Next, moving forward, if we talk about an ideal ammeter, what should be the condition for an ideal ammeter? Okay. Now, let us say if I is the amount of current which is flowing in the circuit and if you connect an ammeter over here in series, what do you want? What do you expect that ammeter to do? You want that ammeter should give me the value of current. What is the value of current? I is equal to V by R, right? Using Ohm's law, V by R, no problem. Correct. Now, if I'm connecting this and I find that the resistance of the ammeter is some value Ra, this is the real case, okay, then I'm not going to measure this I, I'll be measuring I1. So, I1 will be equal to what? The net resistance of the circuit is V divided by capital R plus Ra, correct? Capital R plus Ra. Now, you can clearly see that I1 is less than I. I1 is less than i which means you are measuring less amount of current you are measuring what you are measuring less amount of current this is not giving you a correct reading so it means that if i assume ra to be equal to zero if somehow the resistance of the ammeter is equal to zero which is practically not possible but in ideal case we are talking about a hypothetical ideal case so if this becomes equal to zero then you will be measuring the correct value right so what is the requirement the resistance of the ammeter the resistance of the ammeter should be minimum should be minimum then only you approach to the actual value of the current that is there and the resistance of an ideal ammeter should be equal to zero did you understand this okay ideal obviously <laughs> not possible in in practical sense but if we assume that okay there is a hypothetical ammeter which is a perfect ammeter and what should it, its criteria be that the resistance that it should offer should be equal to zero no problem 